How y'all doing? So y'all know this ain't the day that I normally go live, but I felt the need to make a live video today. So I know y'all not prepared for me to go live today, so I'm gonna give y'all the opportunity to log on because I got some shit I need to talk about. And I don't know if I wanna, I don't know if I wanna vent. I don't know if I wanna just talk shit. I don't know if I wanna get on y'all ass. I don't know. But I think I'm probably gonna end up doing a little bit of all of it before this video over with, you know? So I'm gonna give y'all a chance to get in. All right, it's about 30, y'all. All right, all right. Cause you know, when you work in an adult store, first of all, let me say this. I'm Sharonda Parker. For those of y'all that don't know me, I'm Sharonda Parker. Go ahead and like and share this video. So, um, you know, when you work in, in a novelty store like I work in, you get people that come in and they all have different type of mentalities. And, of course, people make the world go round, so I don't expect everybody to think like me. Of course I don't. Um, because this world would be very boring if everybody thought like me. But I had a young lady that came in and... Her exact words was, <laughs> my grandma told me, if you got good pussy, you ain't got to suck nobody dick. What? Like, your grandma said what? <laughs> Y'all listen to these old fucking people that didn't calm down and they didn't slow down and they pussy don't even work no more. Like, y'all serious? Like, this the bullshit they telling their grandkids? Like, let me tell you something. A long time ago, all women had was their respect. That's all they had. And their reputation. Let me say that. All you had as a woman was your reputation. Nothing else spoke for you but your reputation. Because a lot of times you were dependent upon somebody else to take care of you. And you had to keep a respectable reputation for a man to want to take you as his wife and keep you and take care of you because you were a dependent. You didn't do anything on your own. Like, y'all, that was a long time ago. Like, times have changed. And a lot of times what, what your grandma is not telling you is... People told you what to do in order to get a husband, meaning you you keep yourself and you you carry yourself in a certain way to get a husband. They stopped there. They didn't tell you what the fuck you had to do to keep him. That's why I come in. I'm telling you what the fuck you got to do to keep him. Okay? Sharonda, which grandma said that? A, a, a old grandma that was trying to keep her granddaughter from being a hoe out here in these people's streets. We, I, even me as a mother, I tell my daughters like, yeah, you don't go and be giving yourself to everybody and doing this and doing that because you, you want to have some kind of respect about yourself. However, if my daughter get married, I'm going to tell her, you do whatever the fuck you got to do to keep your husband happy. If he like his fucking feet, took a motherfucker, tickle them feet. Whatever it is that he like, that's what you do. As long as y'all in agreement with it. But y'all listening to your grandma and you out here and you married and you got a husband and you feeling like certain shit you ain't got to do because if my pussy good, then I shouldn't have to do all of that. Will you go ahead and keep on with that backwards ass thinking? Because what your grandma ain't told you was when... She decided that she didn't want to have no more children. She was sucking a whole lot of dick and she was swallowing a whole lot of children. Your grandma ain't going to have that kind of fucking conversation with you, though. She ain't going to tell you, <coughs> once we realized that we kept having all these fucking children and they all was costing us money and we wanted to have a certain quality of life and we knew that we completed our family, or oh, I was sucking a whole lot of dick and I was eating up the churn and the grand churn and the great grand churn, too. People don't have them kind of conversations with their children and their grandchildren. They just don't. But it don't mean that it don't happen. <clears throat> Our grandma tell us a whole lot of shit. I heard you supposed to be dushing. You supposed to be getting a little water bag, filling it up with fucking uh, vinegar and water. 
But right now today, if you go to your doctor, she going to tell you, don't listen to your grandma. She going to tell you that. Your grandma also said when you have a baby, you're supposed to stay inside for about a month or two. You ain't supposed to be out there walking around. Ain't nobody even supposed to see you or the baby. They hide you for two months or so before you can even go walking outside. That ain't what people doing no more. I was in college when I had my second child and I went back maybe 10 days after I had my baby. But your grandma gonna tell you this shit because her grandma was working on a fucking plantation as a fucking sharecropper. And that was hard, strenuous work on the body. And it was hard to go right back out there in that field and work right after you had a baby. So yeah, you had to be put up in the house for a month or two to give your body a chance to shake back from the fucking work you about to go out there and do. It ain't like that for us no more. Right now, they, they schedule you for a follow-up visit a week after you had your baby. So if we listening to what the fuck grandma said, we wouldn't even be able to go to our follow-up visit. Like, I just want you to understand that old people, they mean well. I got to get comfortable, y'all. Old people, they mean well. But they're telling you things that went on during their time period. Shit didn't change. These men want you to fucking freak them. And my mom was freaking her man too. But guess what? She ain't told you about it because back then they had a sense of privacy. Everything was kept private. Just like being gay and being lesbian, that shit ain't nothing new. They had men back when we was growing up and we knew they was a little touched and sugary. You just ain't never see them with nobody because they were private with what they did. Women was lesbians back then. Why you think the black folks and the people gave Alice Walker such a hard time. And if you don't know who Alice Walker is, that's the woman that wrote uh, The Color Purple. Um, and she wrote those type of books during that time period. Miss Sugar Avery and Celia was going together. They was lovers. They was lesbians. If you read the book, then you knew that these people was in love with each other. And they came down hard on her. How you gonna write about women in the 1920s and 1930s being lesbians? Because this shit ain't just started. It's just that people was private. Ain't nothing wrong with listening to your grandma. Grandma be having good recipes. She know how to cook for the main and feed him. But when it come down to the bedroom in 2018, you need to be listening to people like Sharonda Parker. I was driving and the Lord was talking to me and he, he talked to me. Because a lot of times y'all don't understand this is my ministry. This is a ministry. And people say, why you say it's a ministry? A ministry is anything that you do that's serving the people. Ministry means to serve. Okay, my ministry is to serve, it's to teach people about their bedroom. The Lord told me when I was driving, he said, Sharonda, you ain't put here to teach people about no finances. You ain't put here to tell people how to save money or, or deal with that in their relationships. You ain't here to, to deal with people uh, that have certain issues in their relationship when it comes to depression and all of that. You are strictly here to teach people about intimacy in a relationship and how to become closer mentally, physically in their relationship. That's what you're here for. So sometimes when y'all send me questions and they be all over the place about all other issues, I give you my opinion about it. Okay? But the one thing that I know that I'm put here for is to teach you about being intimate and how to build connection in your relationship, when it, how to turn up in your bedroom. That's what I'm put here for, okay? I was I always shot away because people always inbox me about doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with their husbands or maybe coming in one-on-one -on -one and talking to me. And I always shot away from this over the last 10 years because I never considered myself to be a counselor or a licensed professional and I used to feel like I didn't have you know certain expertise in certain areas because I wasn't licensed to do it but but God himself told me you need to do it if people want to talk to you one-on-one -on -one, you need to consult with them if couples want to talk to you one-on-one -on -one, uh, couples want to come together 
and consult with you and do a, cons a consultation, you need to do it. Because you put here to help them when it comes down to elevating them in their bedroom, in their sex life. No, I ain't here to, to talk about if he cheated on you. No, that's not my that's not my area of specialty. I'm not here to talk about if y'all can't get y'all finances together or if he don't want to work to take care of the family or if she don't want to, you know, do this, that, the other. But when it comes down to the bedroom and what to do to increase intimacy, I was put here for that. So I'm going to um, get a flyer generated. I talked to my husband about it this morning. I'm going to actually generate a flyer, you know, for people who want to book me just for that because you may not necessarily want a fun party. And you may want to meet with me one-on-one. -on -one, I'm here for it. So, you know, those are the type of things that I'm going to branch off into and start doing. Because everybody don't want to, you know, send a message to the inbox. But they want to sit down one-on-one -on -one and say, look, this is where we're in our bedroom. And this is where we're trying to go sexually in our bedroom. So, um, if you're interested in that, my email address is on my page. But it's only one PPG at gmail.com and I'm gonna go on here and add it. Never mind, let me grab my phone and add it. Um pull up this live and add it. Let's see. I'm gonna add it on here. It's only one ppg at gmail.com. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and inbox me. I'm here. No, uh, let's see. Gotta turn this down. And I want to say something else because I just had a young lady that left out of here and I'm adding this, but I, I want to say this because I just think it's our job as um, business owners, as I, I don't really consider myself an elder, but to some of these <coughs> 18 and 19 year old girls, I am an elder to them. We got to do better with <coughs> teaching our children. I just had two young women to come here and one was looking for a job and one was coming in to talk for a friend. So a friend stayed in the car. She was on the phone, right? So when I, I seen her, she was on the phone and her friend comes in and she like, you hiring? And I was like, um, possibly, you know, what you got going on? Oh, well, my friend was interested in getting a job. She had picked me up the ride with her, but I had forgot my purse. So I ain't got no information on me. But I was coming up in here to see if you was hiring for her. I immediately stopped her right there. And I let her know, this is not how you look for a job. This is not how you and your friends should be looking for a job. First of all, if you're looking for a job, you need to go by yourself and look for a job. And your friend need to go by herself and look for a job. You need to be dressed appropriate. I literally had to stop. Because I used to be a, a GED teacher. And one of the things that I would have to do is get them ready for the real world. And how to fill our job applications. It was called vocational training. You don't come out here with no uh, no head wrap tied around your head unless it's a fashionable one. Okay? But you don't have your head tied up like you just got out the bed and you came. Let's start there. Two, <clears throat> you don't ever come in and talk for your friend. Even if I was hiring, I would not hire either one of y'all right now today. And I told her that to her face. I would not hire you because you don't come in talking for nobody. And if your friend interested in a job, then her phone conversation should not be coming first. Right? <clears throat> we got to teach this to our children. When you sending somebody in that tell me one thing, you ain't interested in no job, you lazy, and this ain't no priority to you. And as a small business owner, I need go get us. Because my business can only survive when people buy things, right? So if you ain't even interested in doing the right thing to come and get the job, I know damn well if I hire you, you ain't going to be interested in doing what you got to do to keep it, right? So we got to do better and teach our children the right way to go out and look for jobs. You don't go pick your motherfucking friend up to go look for a job. You go by yourself. You look presentable. You have your purse, your ID, your social security card. You have your fucking references, their names and their numbers. You have your resume. You look presentable and you don't chew no motherfucking gun. Right? This the shit that was taught to me. We not teaching our children, y'all. 
We setting them up for failure. We setting them up to have to depend on somebody else to do something for them. Even if it's the government they got to depend on. Right? Y'all, we got to do better. But that's my little uh, two cents for the day. Don't listen to your grandma, baby. <laughs> your pussy may be good. My pussy good, too. I, my pussy so good, and this is some shit that I know. But at the same time, when I'm sucking dick, bitch, I'm sucking dick for myself. Lord. I'm doing it because I love it just that much. Right? <coughs> I can't tell nobody else to love it. I can only speak for myself. But I'm just saying, when I'm sucking dick, I'm doing it for me. Because I absolutely love it. That's the shit that get my pussy jumping before I even get on the dick. For real. So, like this shit, love this shit, share this shit. I enjoy talking to y'all today. Teach your children. Because they coming out here and they don't even know no better, y'all. I'm serious, y'all. They don't even know no better. They just doing what they feel like. They, they know they need a job. They know they need money. And they just doing shit. They don't even know no better. Like, we got to teach them, y'all. And stop. And I saw this on the post. Stop putting your churn out at 18 years old. Like, you got to teach them. They supposed to already know what the fuck your rules is before they turn 18. If your rules is don't come in your house after a certain time, they supposed to know that shit prior to 18. So they already know. Don't even try you when they turn 18 because they already know your rules, right? They know you can't bring no man or no woman up in here and lay up in my shit. But they know that before they turn 18, like my children know. Like, ain't nobody going beyond my fucking living room. If you bring company, a company stays in the motherfucking living room where we can all fellowship in this motherfucker together. Your company don't go all in the back of my house to the fucking bedrooms and shit. They know your rules prior to turning 18. So when they turn 18, it shouldn't be, oh, they out of hand. And they don't listen and they doing this shit. That's because something somewhere during the raising process, somewhere there was a breakdown. And there was a level of respect that was lost somewhere along the way. And they felt like they could do what the fuck they wanted to do in your shit. So when they turned 18, they felt like they could do what the fuck they wanted to do. But they supposed to know before they make 18 that they can't do what the fuck they want to do in your shit. <clears throat> so you shouldn't be putting them out at 18. They ain't ready. These streets getting them, eating them up, spitting them out, throwing them back to you. Sending them back to you fucking junkies. Sending them back to you fucking pregnant. Sending them back to you all fucked up. For real. <coughs> Even at 18, they still are babies, y'all. So, yeah. That concludes my video. Like the shit, share this shit. Come see me at the PPG store. I'm here. Come get these edible panties, y'all. They still $5. He eat, let him eat the pussy. $5. To get your pussy ate a whole nother different type of way. To get him a little nice sweet treat on top of the pussy. They got a hole in the edible pen where he can still get to the pussy even though he getting to the flavor first. For real. All right, you right too. Um, you right, Darren. They want to be friends. And, and you're supposed to be able to have a, a relationship with your children. Like my children, they can come to me and tell me anything. Like they can literally tell me anything. But at the same time, their respect is there. Okay? You got to have balance. Let's see. Big girl, just lay it on top. You motherfucking right, bitch. If the strings don't fit. <coughs> Y'all know my motto. If the strings don't fucking fit, fuck them strings. Lay that panty on top of that pussy. He gonna still eat the panty and the pussy too. Y'all know how I be feeling. I gotta open this door. My sinuses all over the place. This good Louisiana weather. It's beautiful here, y'all. Beautiful, beautiful day for some crawfish. Some crawfish. Beautiful day for some crawfish. Y'all have a good one. I ain't gonna hold you too long like a shell. Visit me online. Oh, I ain't put the website on here. Let me put it on here. Oh, the PPG store. Thank you. All the people that's been shopping online. <clears throat> Y'all be all up in the middle of the night shopping online, child. I'm talking about hard up purchasing at 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. And I appreciate it. It does not bother me to have to get up and go and mail your shit to you. It sure don't. I'm, I'm trying to build this e-commerce uh website i'm trying to have i'm trying to make money all in my sleep yeah that's how you do it the website and if you like these videos and you miss videos go visit me on youtube oh make sure you register 
on the website, if you want to take advantage of coupons and stuff like that, make sure you register. www.thepppgstore.com is where you can find me. Or, if that's too hard to remember, sharondaparker.com. Yeah, if you ain't got your tickets for latest night, <laughs> you're going to miss out. A lot of times, y'all be want me to put too much out there on the internet. Y'all want me to say what's going to be going on. Say who's going to be there. No, bitch, spend your $10 and you come and see. Because this is the old PPG latest night. Yeah. So if you ain't never been to the PPG latest night and you heard about it, then that should be enough to make you want to get your ticket right there. Mm -hmm. And the ticket's online at the website as well. I'll be throwing that link back up there. So if you if you that heard about it, you you need to get your ticket and be there. I think I might have like 29 seats left. And I got like uh, over 10,000 people following. So you just let me know how long you think them 29 seats going to last. Why is you waiting on your friend to decide if she going to come? You better come and say, fuck it. I'm going to go party with Sharonda. Fuck it. Pull me, bitch. I'll party with you. I'll lay out there on the fucking floor with you. Sharonda, fuck with. I give zero fuck. I be wanting to, let me tell you, when, when I leave here, I don't even be wanting to have no voice. Like, that's how I be wanting to party. Like, for real, for real. Like, bitches used to come and lay out and sleep at my counter. They be the party so hard at the fucking PPG party. Bitches be all laid out on the fucking sales floor. They can't even make it to their car. Motherfuckers got to come and get their car and bring it around to them, pick them up, put them in the back seat, and take them home. Like, that's how the fuck we party at PPG. You ever heard of White Girl Wasted? Like, yeah. Standing all up in the fucking chairs in this bitch. We got good chairs. Our chairs hold about 700 fucking pounds. We ain't got them little fucking flimsy folding chairs. We got good motherfucking chairs. They got feet on them bitches. We goes hard in this motherfucker. Yeah. Live entertainment in this bitch this Friday, 9 p.m. Bitch, wash your pussy before you come. Yes. I'm signing out on that note.